This is the Scrintle course video number three, the research workflow. Using my demonstration Scrintle project, you can see I have a card here. Now I imported these straight from Obsidian, which means that this would be a podcast note. So I've listened to a podcast and this is the like literature note or the input note. This isn't my like actual note taking on that subject matter. So opening up this uh, particular um, card here, we can see that I have several different things going on. Now, a lot of this is content straight from Obsidian, so it doesn't really work in the paradigm. But what we can do to facilitate a research workflow in Scrintle is several different factors. We can, one, use tags for management. There are also card colors on a particular board. But we also still have a lot of the bidirectional linking of card notes and a lot of the stuff that I would, that I would do in other applications. But this is how we're going to do things in Scrintle. So you can see I have several different tags here. Now, by having the inbox tag, that lets me look at every single input in the entire collection of cards that I have. Now, having inputs that are um, that have the headphone, now that means that this is a particular podcast input. Now, I also have it separated in, uh, because I don't want a million tags, but also the red just lets me know which things are not finished processing. So if I went to the tags pane over here, what I can do is I can actually select my inputs and then it shows me all of these. Now it's showing me a couple different weird things here. So let's go back to the board, go back home, tags, and I want to look at inputs. You can see I have four cards here that are inputs. Now it shows me all of those. Now if I look at just my podcasts, I have two. Now if I look at my red ones, I also still have two. Now I can actually um, go to the tags pane here and let's clear out that search. I can go to tags and I can do the same thing over here. I don't always need to open up the tag pane, but by doing this, I can easily get to all of my cards that have that particular tag. So I can go back to here and here we are, the one that has that tag. So now I can easily group and sort all of these different cards based on a contextless grouping of the tag. Now, one cool thing we can do in Scrintle is we can actually embed media. So you can see I have the YouTube video embedded here, no problem. I can just copy the URL, paste it in here, and the player is active. Now, I can take notes on this while the video is playing in here and you know, just type out whatever notes for whatever video. I mean, obviously this isn't exactly note-taking content, but trying to find a link on my clipboard was just whatever. So we can take notes on the media we have embedded in these files and for videos, this might work great. For other things, maybe, maybe not, but we can also attach everything directly to the literature card, literature note. So all of these attachments can also be added to these, and then we can take notes on them or link our notes into a linked card. And now you could do this in the board view where you have the, you know, the layout of the board, but what we also might do is simply uh, link a new card. So I can do the plus sign and I can say, this is an interesting note on this input and create a new card, which opens up to the side pane while I'm still able to view the main content. Now, whether that's you know, podcast notes or the actual like first wave notes I've taken on something that aren't my own unique thoughts, but just observations and highlights from a particular medium, then I can look at those and then formulate my own actual thoughts on this linked card. So this is my unique thought. And there we go, now we have it. So now that is linked there. This is an interesting note. Okay, so if I went back to the board, now is it on the board? No, the card I just made is not linked to the board or the main card on that board because the boards are just groupings of cards that are all just floating out into your main collection. So technically, if I wanted to add that note card to this board and make it relevant to the other items on the board, I would then need to go to like you know, recent search queries, recent openly recently opened cards, and here it is. This is a unique note. So now I can drag this onto the board, and because they're already related, you can see that there is this relation here. So I don't even need to make the relation on this like graph view. It's because I've already linked them together, and I just make notes as I think of them, Whenever I drag them onto the board with other related cards, they're already linked like this. And opening up this card too lets me see that the backlinks show the, the link where I actually made this from. But now that I've dragged it onto the board, it also shows that it appears on this particular board. It could also show me that I have this related card 
on any number of other boards because the output of my notes on a particular piece of input or literature could be relevant to other contexts, projects, and boards. So with this way, we can create these notes and just toss them into the main archive of cards. And as we search for them, drag them onto relevant boards, or even link them to other concepts and things, they will eventually start forming their own little web network like this that becomes even more readily apparent when we add them to a project board. Now, alongside tagging for grouping and collecting and managing the uh, completion state of your different inputs, one thing we can also do for a more graphical version of that, if you have like a particular project board and you want to keep track of you know, the processing for a particular project on a particular board, is we can select different cards and we can actually change the colors of these of these cards on here so we can actually have a color coding system to say oh, okay well uh, i'm sort of working on this one so we'll make that one yellow this was just like a, a note that i still need to follow up on so i'll make that one green or whatever and you can define what your color key is for this and then use that to manage things graphically on a particular project board so this could be very handy for dealing with one, your inputs, but also just the notes that you made that are related to that input for this project that you want to actually flesh out a little bit more. You just want to get the seedling idea out of your head. And let's say at the end of the day that I've taken this note. It is a note that is relevant to this input, but it's not relevant to the project that I'm trying to focus on. And I don't necessarily need it on this board. I can always just remove this card from the board, but the card still exists. It's still related to this particular input. It's just not relevant to this project board. And if I go to cards, you can see it's still in here and it's always going to be accessible because if I did a search and I say interesting, there it is. I can easily find this card or I can use uh, tags to keep track of things that are seedlings or there's a variety of ways to uh, figure out what your research workflow is going to be, but not everything needs to live on the board. Even if it's related to the particular input, if it's not related to the topic of the board, you don't need to have it on there and you can create boards for every particular topic or project that you want inside of Scrintle and only have the relevant objects and items there. And then see when you start drop, dropping them on and trying to see the groupings and collections and differences between these items, how they're already relating to each other because of all the prior work that you've put in. So the more you flesh out your knowledge base and then drop these cards into a project board, the more you're going to see connections and potentially insights that you didn't have before.